Hey everybody, hi and welcome to a hands-on lab session with Apache Hori. Uh, so this is gonna be a hands-on lab. Basically in my last video, I essentially gave you a project demo. If that essentially, uh, you know, made you interested, let's do a hands-on project uh, in this video. What are we about to do? Well, in my previous video, we built a streaming solution which means our DynamoDB was our OLTP database, which is essentially holding transactional data, right? And we essentially want to bring uh, data out of DynamoDB into S3 data like into our Apache Hori, right? Uh, we essentially did that using several Kinesis stream, right? And we used the Lambda as a transformation, glue streaming job, processing the streaming data, and essentially we did an upsort on the uh, Apache Hori tables. That is great. This solution is absolutely great for workload that needs real time, um, you know, uh, changes and updates, right? And you you cannot uh, essentially uh, expect any delays. But a lot of workloads uh, in in scenarios you are maybe okay with, you know, the the data being loaded into Apache hoodie. Maybe after like a one hour, two hour, three hour, or basically based on a time interval. This is called batch oriented approach. Basically, we are gonna do the same thing, which means we're gonna uh, have our DynamoDB as our transactional database where transactions are happening, right? We are gonna stream uh, the updates, that is insert, update, deletes, right? And we're gonna stream that through Kinesis uh, data stream. Once we have the data in the Kinesis data stream, we are gonna use FireOS to bring that data on S3. Once we have it on S3, while we essentially get on S3, in the FireOS, we're gonna use a Lambda function as a transformation. This Lambda function, you know, takes the data, uh, essentially converts the DynamoDB JSON into a regular, regular standard JSON, and then essentially returns back to the uh, FireOS. The FireOS will essentially dump all the larger files on S3. Now from here, you have a glue job. We're gonna process this data incrementally using glue, right? Uh, which means uh, this job will be running maybe on an hourly or, um, or, or two hours, three hours, six hours daily, again, depending upon a use case. And we're gonna read the incremental data and essentially perform an upsort on uh, Hodi, which means my DynamoDB is always gonna be in sync with my Apache Hodi tables. That's, that's what we're gonna do. So let's take a look. The first thing that is the architecture and then followed by hands-on step-by-step guide. So let's get started. That is the first part, that is the architecture. So let's see the architecture. So here and again all the code and resources is there on the get up section we are gonna do this uh, step by step so don't worry about the code part okay uh, here you can see uh, all the code is given here with the explanation and steps here okay so the first thing that we will have in our component is DynamoDB right and basically we are gonna stream the changes um, right into Kinesis data stream we're gonna use a FireOS with a lambda transformation and it's gonna add all the housekeeping and the metadata and then essentially dump it into the S3 here is a glue job uh, again um, this glue job might, might be a scheduled job so we can process the, these um, S3 files uh, incrementally. Um, so you're gonna use a bookmark and you know incrementally process new, uh, new files. And these new files are inserted into the Apache Hori transactional data lake, which means my DynamoDB is now in sync with my um, uh, Apache Hori, right? The reason we are doing Apache Hori because uh, again, anytime insert update happens, you will have a you know, lot of records for that particular ID, right? You don't want that, right? I just want the updated um, record. I don't want what happened, like insert update. I just need, you know. So what I'm trying to say is my DynamoDB data, I want it in sync with my data lake. That's what we're trying to do. So that that is the architecture. So uh, we're gonna do that. And again, here is all the code and um, material, okay? So the first step that we're gonna do here is basically, um, I'm actually gonna open my AWS account, right? So I'll go to my AWS account. And here the first thing is we need to generate keys. Okay, I'm gonna go very easy, assuming anybody can follow with these videos. Okay, so I will go to IAM, click here. Now click on the user section and I'm gonna uh, generate some credentials for me. So I'm gonna say YouTube lab, gonna do an access uh, key programmatic. Um, gonna click on attach policy use administrator access click next review 
and click on create and then what you want to do is basically copy this on a notepad okay so i'm gonna copy the access key copy the secret key and basically the first step is done so now you have the access key the next part is basically we have to create a role okay so i'll show you that part again create two roles uh, i have a role for a again uh, here you can see the lab three for this role basically assign administrative access remember man while doing labs we don't want to deal with the access issue we want to essentially understand the concept and able to build stuff without these access problem so hence i'm going to use administrative access okay so here make sure you use administrative access so it should be pretty straightforward you can click on create role select um, ec2 or lambda and just give administrative access for now okay then the next role that we want to do is basically for the fire hose um, again the name would be kinesis fire hose custom role and attach these three stuff into that amazon s3 full access amazon um, uh, lambda kinesis execution role and amazon lambda full access okay um, please attach that and here you can see um, the trust relationship here you can see allow fire amazon.com and sts assume role okay so this is um, what we want to do again this is given on the gear up section uh, if you uh, i'll just show you the steps quickly just let me take a photograph here and also let me copy this on a notepad so the way, if you don't know how to do that uh, again i'll show you create role um, then uh, here you can search for fire hose uh, not the network fire hall uh, let me search for kinesis okay so i'm gonna search for kinesis over here i'm gonna click this button okay click next and then here you can just search for for example amazon s3 full access right so i can just say s3 and then click on the checkbox then remove this and add other stuff and then basically click next next and the role should be created so i have these roles okay so uh, assuming that you have done that now we'll go over the step-by-step -step infrastructure code so the step one is pretty straightforward you got the keys you got the roles right and uh, on the get up section here you can see i have shown you the screenshots okay so now the step two is basically going through the infrastructure code and deploying the stack um so uh let me close everything and i'll go slow slow here um so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over the infrastructure code uh, because we're going to deploy the entire stack right i'm using serverless framework i love serverless framework right so here service framework provider as aws i'm providing certain keys i'm using three plugins serverless lift serverless.env plugin and serverless plugin for the resource tagging here essentially I'm excluding certain npm files because when I deploy my lambda function I don't need those files okay here essentially I'm defining my lambda function so function lambda giving it a name handler is equal to lambda function which means I have a python file called lambda function inside that I'm invoking a, a function called lambda handler so if you observe over here right and here is the lambda handler okay so straightforward ah. let me collapse this okay so so far so everybody good right doing good okay now in the resource object here we are creating an s3 bucket this is the s3 bucket where we're gonna uh, dump data from the fire hose and also process the data and basically dump it again into this bucket into the hoodie table okay here on this line i'm kin uh, creating a kinesis um, stream uh, this is again on on demand mode which means i don't have to worry about scaling i'm using 24 hours as a retention period here is my kinesis fire hose here i'm saying type as kinesis fire hose delivery system here i'm giving a, a stream name here i'm giving a stream type right and again here um if you observe carefully here is the on so basically this means this kinesis is connected to a fire hose um over here as you can see uh, i'll show you all that don't worry um, then extended s3 configuration here uh, i'm saying that this delivery stream is going to deliver data to the s3 here is the bucket on where we're going to deliver the data uncompressed then i'm gonna if you observe here i've enabled a lambda processing so here i'm saying processing configuration enabled true and here i'm providing the lambda arn which is going to process my data right over here and then here is the prefix where it has to deliver data on s3 so i'm saying hey when you deliver data put the data on s3 in a folder called data 
where the table name is OLTP, year, month, and day. These are the partition. And if anything fails, it will go inside an error folder. Again, I'm essentially defining a folder structure here, right? So that should be straightforward, right? And here is a very simple DynamoDB table. Here is my PK, is my SK. The PK is a ray, um, hash key. This is my sort key. Together, they act as a composite key. Here, I'm defining my um, that. Point in time recovery is true, which means anytime something happens, I can recover my DynamoDB. Uh, here I'm enabling Kinesis Stream, and here I have a Glue database, and here I have a crawler. Crawler is basically gonna run on the table. So basically, once the the Firehose deliver the data to S3, we're gonna catalog that data, right? We are gonna identify the underlying schema, and we'll use Glue batch processing to load the data into S, uh, Apache Hodi uh, transactional data lake uh, incrementally. So easy right again it's not difficult man i'm telling you okay so now that you have done that right uh, i'll show you the code for the lambda function again should be very straightforward um, here is the code for lambda function for each records we're going to receive batch of records right in the firehose we're going to deserialize the data once we deserialize we check whether the type was insert update or delete from dynamo right and based on that we are adding certain housekeeping fields we are adding a year month and a day Right, so basically these are certain housekeeping fields that I'm adding. Here I'm defining the partition that is your month and day. And then essentially uh, this is gonna, if you observe, this is you know appending into an array called output. And at the end, I'm essentially returning that the Lambda is gonna return back to the Firehose and then the Firehose will deliver the data to the S3. Again, straightforward, very easy, nothing complicated here, right? So now the what we need to do is now we need to deploy the stack, right? So follow these commands with me, right? Uh, on the you know you'll have a file called deploy dot uh, deploy, and here are the steps that we need to do. Remember we essentially copy pasted uh, the access key. So first we need to configure our serverless environment, right? So here I'm where it says access, I'm gonna put my access key. Here I'm gonna put my secret keys and then i'm gonna copy this and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open this in the project directory so i'm gonna say open in terminal over here so first i'm gonna configure them right so i'm gonna configure these keys and i should get a check box uh, checkbox saying that everything okay so here you can see profile configured then i need to install these three plugins since i'm using that so npx serverless plugin install serverless lift there you go then I'm gonna install the second plugin. Again, the straightforward man, nothing crazy. And, and, and the steps are also given on the gear up. So if you scroll to gear up, right, I have given the steps here, you see, you know, deploy everything, right? So again, if you are following with me, stop the video, pause the video, do the stuff, then resume, then watch the other part, again, do it, right? That's how you're gonna learn, right? So um, the first plugin has been installed. I'm gonna install the second plugin at this point. Uh, it's it's installing then the third plugin and before you deploy i have to tell you certain things okay so uh, uh, hold on so i'm just installing all the plugins now in the env file what you want to do is you want to uh, put your access and secret key over here right now what what are the things you will change don't change anything except your s3 bucket so here put your s3 bucket again this is the bucket the glue is going to i mean uh, this, uh, this is my, my serverless.yml file is going to create that S3 bucket, uh, you know, the cloud formation, right? So put an S3 bucket over here, right? Um, then all you need to put, do is um, here you see the, ro the role and now put the role that we made for the firehose, right? And again, we, we just put the ARN for that. Uh, again, if you don't know where to get that, I'll, I'll show you. No, no, no worries, man. We all are learning, so right. So now search here for the the one that you created, and then here copy the role. If you're looking for the account ID, it's always on the drop down. So so like that. So here I am putting the role. So change that to your role, okay? Um, then put the account um, number over here, right? Uh, then over here simply change the bucket name. That's all. So those are the changes you gotta do. I'll repeat the changes. Change access and secret key. Change the S3 bucket change the ARN role and um, yeah, change the ARN role and over here, change the S3 bucket over here. That's it. Um, assuming you did all these changes, now we're gonna deploy the stack. So I'm gonna close everything here. So now I'm gonna say NPX, you can also do SLS deploy or serverless deploy. They all work fine. SLS deploy. Now 
this will deploy my entire stack. So basically this is going to deploy my LinkedIn is open. <laughs> this is going to deploy a Dynamo DB, a Kinesis, a Fireos, a Lambda, an S3, a, um, a glue job, not because you're going to use notebook. Okay. So this is going to deploy one, two, three, four, five, five items. Okay. Um, so we have an error, cannot resolve the serverless or YAML variable resolution. Uh, so we have an error that says cannot resolve variable resource, resource, kinesis, virus, property, extended destination, configuration, parameter, parameter value does not, does not match the signature for you provided. Check your AWS secret access signing method. Oh, okay. Looks like uh, certain keys are a little off here. So everything else is fine. Let me make sure this is the dynamo DB, right? Okay. Yeah, looks good. Um, so I might, um, I might uh, try to redeploy this. So let me make sure I put my access key correctly. So it ends with AK. Ah, that's why I messed up. Sorry. So I'm gonna uh, configure it again. So I'll so I put access and access key both places and that's the reason it didn't work. And again, profile configured and now I'll retry to de deploy my stack again. NPX SLS deploy. Now again, this should deploy the stack now. Um, again, a small error there, I fixed it. Don't worry, I'm going to change my access keys later on. So don't worry about that. At this point, the stack is in the deployment state and this might take about five to 10 minutes because there's a lot of thing that is going to deploy. So go grab a cup of coffee. Sorry about the noise. Go grab a cup of coffee and uh, we are going to be back once the stack is deployed. Okay. As you can see, it's still in the deploying state. So I'm going to resume the video once this is complete. Okay. So I'm resuming as you can see almost there 10 out of 11, uh, right? The stack is currently in a deploy deploying state. Again, um, try to follow with me, pause the video and resume as and when we go. Okay. So that's the best way you will learn. And again, you know, the best part, all of this tutorial are free of cost. I don't need money, man. It's all free content. I'm doing it to teach people, right? So all, all the content is available. Nowadays, knowledge is very easily accessible, right? You just have to search and you have everything uh, at our fingertips, right? That's all I'm trying to say. So um, again, uh, 10 out of 11. And if you get stuck, comment on the video, ask people, there are people to help, right? But you have to put in the effort, right? That's all I'm trying to say. Uh, again, this is, um, you know, being deployed, right? Um, again, since this is being deployed a little bit, right? So for example, one raised to 365 is one. 1.01 1 raised to 365 is 36 or 37 roughly. That 0 0.1 that you add, and if you keep doing it consistently, it's gonna compound, you know? So add that extra effort, 0 0.1 every single week or day and see the magic. That's all I'm trying to say. And at the end, since again, still, still it's being deployed, right? Don't be afraid to try new things out. You know, uh, step out of your comfort zone and try to learn and explore. That's an amazing part, right? Uh, so again, I'm still deploying. I'm just going to wait at this point. Again, should be done in a, about a minute or so. So I think it's on the last part. Almost there. So now this um, basically will deploy the entire stack for us. Okay. So almost there. It's still deploying, updating. Surely it takes a second. Now, what I want you to do is open up like couple of tabs on your computer. So the first tab uh, would be DynamoDB. Okay. So this is where you should see your DynamoDB right here, here, right? So here we don't have it yet. The stack is still deploying in the deploying state. So I'm going to wait. You should see a DynamoDB table over here. Uh, on the next tab, I want you to open up um, S3 and we're going to open up our S3 bucket. I think I named it something called um, this one. Okay, the stack has finally been deployed. So that's a good thing. Gonna refresh. Oh, there you go. That's the bucket. Okay, so that's good, right? So the first is Dynamo, second is the S3 bucket. Now open up Glue on the third tab. 
okay so this should be your glue and here you should see a da da database should be something called QADB I guess I'm in the wrong region observe I'm in Oregon so you gotta make sure you're in the right region so I'm gonna switch back to US East one and that's the region I don't see my dynamo because I'm in the wrong region here I have my dynamo db table in the us east one i have my bucket also in the us east one i have my glue database called qadb in the us east one i have nothing inside there and now let's try the project out now before we do i want to show you the kinesis as well so the kinesis stream should be ready as well so if you come to the data stream and here you can see dynamo db streams right um, again that's that if you go to delivery stream right yeah, you should see your delivery stream and then if you go to the lambda function you should see your lambda function as well so the the stack is ready at this point okay this is the lambda function it's gonna process from our firos okay now if i open up my dynamo db i shouldn't have any data here right that's great now we will start the job so now now you should have a python file in your project directory called generate fake data and again this is going to generate a lot of data 500 records um, you can make it 300 200 doesn't really matter so i'm gonna generate a lot of records at a pretty fast rate here you can see i'm generating records right if i scroll to dynamodb i see those data over here right now let's head over to the kinesis right so i'm gonna go to the kinesis data stream i'm gonna click on here i'm gonna click on data viewers randomly select any shard and click on trim horizon click get records and here you can see we have the data if you click on json this is the dynamo json right the keys and the new image and all these stuff right now what we need to do is the the, the data is going to be delivered to the delivery stream right and we have a lambda function right this is the lambda function which is going to process that data right so if we go to cloudwatch i should be able to see certain logs if not simply wait because it usually takes time right so i don't see any logs yet so hence i need to wait which means data is in the stream and my delivery stream is gonna receive that data so we simply have to wait at this point okay so um, again that's complete we have in inserted more than two two three hundred records so that's great okay now if i come back to my kinesis data stream click here and on the monitoring section you should be able to see certain things again i think is uh, it's not being refreshed so that's that's fine so you want to go to the delivery stream and as soon as you see certain data on the delivery stream um, so here there is an option if i show you record read from kinesis data stream right so if you see a dot over here which means um, your delivery stream has received data and i want to let you know that you might have to wait about three four five minutes because it usually takes time to come data from the stream to the delivery okay so i'm gonna again run this job uh, again i'm again inserting a lot of data here simply just bombarding my dynamo tv with a lot of insert again this is a very high velocity inserts right that are happening in our oltp database that is our dynamo db over here right again i'm gonna run that again if you observe dynamo db can easily handle all these amazing traffic right so that's great but at this point i simply need to be patient because uh, it usually as I, as I was telling you right it usually takes time to get data so data stream and that's why I said it's more batch oriented processing so still don't see anything and also I wanted to let you know because in Fios we set up a buffer interval which means um, if you get one or two records and if that buffer interval is not men kinesis is not gonna deliver data to the s3 I mean it's gonna do eventually but uh, the reason that it does that because you want to send bigger files because smaller smaller files are not great to do right so i have set a buff buffer interval on my firos as well so i just have to wait at this point you know um again i don't see any matrix um so i'm just gonna wait at this point and uh, try to insert a couple of more again my data is there in the kinesis data stream at this point okay so you simply gotta be a little patient now okay Again, I'm inserting, you know, as you can see, inserting a lot of records. These are randomly generated fake data points that we are trying to, uh, you know, get into our Apache hoodie. Again, these can be our order items, product data, any, any sort of data, right? 
So um, at this point, I just have to wait. There's nothing much I can do because it usually takes time. Let me go to my Lambda function and, and cloud, um, um, CloudWatch and simply refresh if I see. Oh, look, um, my Lambda did receive some data. So here you can see the Lambda has processed the data, right? At this point, so what happened is uh, the data was uh, given by Kinesis data stream to the FireOS. FireOS is calling a Lambda function to process the data. Lambda is going to do the processing and again return to the FireOS. And then the delivery uh, FireOS is going to return data to the S3. So again, that's beautiful. We see certain uh, Lambda invocation at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'll open up my S3 to see if I have some data. Again, I don't have any data from S3. And again, as I said, it usually takes a little time depending upon your buffer interval. So again, your delivery streams, I'm gonna come here, maybe refresh here. And um, before that, when I made this uh, a project demo, it usually took about five to 10 minutes. Um, so I have to wait at this point again, as I said. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna resume the video once I see certain data points. That way I don't have to keep the video in the recording state, okay? So now I have resumed the video back since I saw certain data points and usually it takes time as I was saying, right? Um, here you can see a dot, which means uh, it did read from the stream. Uh, here you can see uh, a dot for a lambda function, which means the lambda function was success, right? I see a dot over here, right? Uh, partition count and here I see a dot uh, for the, you know, uh, for the for the for, for the for the for the data delivery right so again these are slightly delayed uh, i'm on a one hour interval and uh, if you now go to s3 you should have a folder called data table name year month day and then that's your big file where all the data is so that's great now what's what we just built is anytime anything is inserted updated deleted anything that happens it will essentially flow into a stream through FireOS, Lambda process, and it will basically go into S3. Now here is your raw zone, uh, you know, uncurated data. We have to now um, read data from this and essentially load into Apache hoodie. Now, why Apache hoodie? Again, uh, I have been talking um, about this so, so many times, but uh, so for example, let's say, um, uh, I'm just gonna take this one. So let's say you insert it, right? So then uh, you will have an insert here, right? Now let's say you update it, right? So you'll have this to be updated. So basically, when you basically get, uh, you say, hey, give me a, um, give me record one from the data, like you'll have bunch of insert, update, delete. Uh, but what you what you exactly need is uh, what was the last state in the Dynamo, right? So if the line of Dynamo DB is ref referring to this, I don't need all the other stuff, right? So what I really want to do is I want to perform an absurd operation on the data lake, right? So if I have um, same data coming in again, I want the data to be updated. I don't want duplicates, right? So now we're doing some batch processing using glue. So glue is going to read the data from this, right? So now I'm going to show you that process. So over here, if you come to glue, um, you should have a crawler here, right? Now I want you to run the crawler. Now this crawler running might take about a minute or so. So what the crawler does, it's gonna go to the S3 and try to figure out, hey, let me figure out what is the schema of the data. So that is the job of the crawler. So it's gonna go now and it's basically gonna try to identify, okay, what are the columns I have? What is the data type? So this is the process of um, cataloging your data, which means you have your data, you're cataloging it. Again, you don't need to run crawler every now and then once the schema has been identified, uh, you don't need to run it, right? You can run it weekly, monthly, that's fine, right? So this process is called cataloging your data, okay? So now again, I'm running the glue crawler. Um, that was, this, this is all created through that serverless um, um, framework, right? So now we are running the glue crawler. So it's gonna crawl over that data, right? So if you go to data source here, you can see that's the path that's the s3 path right uh, so it's gonna go and basically say okay let me see if i can uh, figure out the schema right so that's 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 what we're trying to do um so let's let's wait for this crawler to complete and what we should see at the end of the crawler is basically over here we should see one table created now once the table is created we're gonna use that table we're gonna write an etl job and basically load into our hoodie right that is the goal so uh, at this point, I'm simply waiting. So here you can see it's still in the running state, right? 
so let me resume once this is complete okay uh, meanwhile the crawler is running we can actually do certain thing that is we can actually make a glue notebook again there is going to be a cost for this lab so don't then blame me okay it, it is not covered under the free tire so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a glue notebook and essentially make a hoodie connector right we're going to use a marketplace connector so since this is in the running state it's taking forever <laughs> so i'm going to go to the connection section over here and i'll walk you over the steps now click on go to marketplace okay then you will search for hoodie over here so type the word hoodie and click on enter and you should see this connector uh, what you want to do is click on the button that says continue to subscribe right and then click on configuration and then select glue 3.0 and apache version uh, hoodie version 0.10.1 click on continue to launch and click on usage instruction and then click on this button that says activate uh, glue connector now type the name here as uh, hoodie connection and then click on the button that says save i've already done that i have a connector so i just wanted to show you the steps so uh, assuming you did the steps correctly um now if you go to the glue uh i think i have a console here uh i can go to connections i just wanted to show you that i have one already so here you can see i have a hoodie connection right so that's that now again this is complete one table has been created so now if you observe your go to database section this one and i should see a table here being created shortly again there's a small glitch again yeah there you can see uh, i can see the table um so now i can go into athena and basically run ad hoc queries to if i want to see what the data looks like what is the schema just do a preview right that's what the data looks like these are the columns etc etc again but here will be a bunch of duplicates bunch of insert update modify you know multiple items i don't so i want to basically now um, do into apache hoodie right so now um we'll head over to the job section this is where you're going to write a glue job um i i yeah i so i'm gonna yeah it's fine so i'm gonna you'll have a jupyter notebook on the github section so if you uh, click here there is a jupyter notebook uh, over here which says glue dynamo db i python download that and uh, when you now create a job here you can see jupyter click on upload and upload the notebook that i gave you okay I, so once you do that, um, um, right, then click on, you know, connect and then create the notebook. I already have a notebook. And again, that notebook is on the get up section over here, right? So again, I'm teaching you, right? So that's why I'm using a notebook, right? So, so that you can see the steps visually. So now this is basically creating our glue notebook, right? So I already have one. So I'm gonna use the notebook from the get up section that I have uploaded in the past. Uh, so let's wait for the notebook to start now what we are doing is basically that's called etl now so we have the data we catalog the data and now we are basically doing certain etl we might clean certain uh, remove certain columns uh, you know and then, then basically perform an upsort on the data lake so sharing my screen back again uh, now here you can see there's a cell uh, so here the region is us east one if you're in, uh, if you're doing in um, any other region make sure to put the appropriate region g1x3 worker and this is that i'm gonna run this cell and here you can see now it's uh, waiting for creating a spark session once the session is created run the uh, run the cell this is going to create a spark instance and now over here we are going to read the data from a catalog so glue context dot create dynamic frame from catalog this is a database name this is a table name we have this one in again uh, if you're following everything with me it should be there here right so uh again i'm just gonna wait for this to complete uh it's still in the running state so it's waiting for the session once the session is created now then i can create the spark instance and then i'm gonna read the data so things are fairly straightforward it's not that difficult okay so let's wait for this to complete and then on this line we are converting the glue data frame into a spark data frame right and then we're gonna do a show of course so i think that's done so now we are reading the data again you will use a bookmark uh, to do incremental data processing so now we're doing a more batch oriented processing okay so again now i'm running the cell this cell has been ran now it's converting that into a spark data frame and i'm doing dot show which means i can show you the data frame right hopefully that made sense right and then basically we're going to insert into our apache hoodie we're going to do an upsert operation which means find one and update right 
uh, here you can see that's the spark data frame a little hard to see but these are all the columns that we had pk sk first name last name city state text address right um, now basically i'm removing certain columns because i don't need a column called aws region and event name in my hoodie so i'm essentially removing that so here you can do all your pre-processing or data processing cleansing work if you need it right so more batch oriented approach right and again i'm gonna do a show operator after that so here i if you observe that's my data frame now i'm gonna zoom in so i'm using uh, i'm gonna create a table called hoodie table a uh, record key is a unique identifier in your data right uh, in my data pk is a unique identifier my precom key this is usually used for um uh, dedupe purposes right so when apache hoodie receives uh, you know a lot of um receives a batch of data and if you have duplicate it's going to use this key to you know do that so i'm going to use an sk for that and then path this is my apache hoodie uh, transactional data lake path right so i'm going to run that cell and then i'm going to do an absurd operation on hoodie so if you observe here carefully that's i'm doing an absurd and uh, let's run the cell and see what this will do is this will create a new table here um, in uh, our database called uh, qadb you should see something called hoodie table so if i quickly refresh again that cell might be still running so again it's in the running state so now we are doing an absurd operation right which means no more duplicates and your dynamo db will be in, in sync with what you have in the hoodie so again you, every time you're going to run the job on schedule hourly uh, hourly or um, six hours or uh, one day and it's going to take the data incrementally using glue bookmark and again do perform an upsert on uh, hoodie tables so again i think that's complete now i can go back here and uh, simply uh, i can head out the glue database and i can refresh and i should see my Apache Hori table here you can see now I can insert update delete perform time travel queries uh, incremental queries create snapshot all that stuff I have a video for all that as well but I just want to show you to query the data so again straightforward uh, you can run ad hoc queries you can run OLAP queries analytical workloads now right so here you can see that's all the data now in the Hori and we can do an absurd so if I take this record and if I go to DynamoDB uh, click on query I'm gonna query my pk and here you can see the name is steven long right and if i go to athena uh, so quickly steven long right so now anytime you know the name has been updated in dynamo db it's going to capture by kinesis data stream into firos into s3 then our glue incremental job is going to pick up pick that up and essentially perform an upsert on data lake so now your dynamo db is in sync with your uh, apache hoodie so that is it guys that is the entire project um i hope you have enjoyed it the entire code base is there um, i strongly encourage you to try this out and if you have questions ask questions and that's how you're gonna learn and grow right so try things out take out some time you know maybe weekends or maybe after your nine to five take out some time spend some time to learn stuff um because learning is really amazing with that being said, thank you so, so very much for watching this entire video. I hope you have really enjoyed. If you have any more questions, list your question in the comment section. With that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I will see you in the next video.